Hey, this is Brett the Hitman Hart. I want to tell you about an upcoming movie I'm going to be starring in called The Outlaw Murders. An action-packed crime drama about a mass murder involving a criminal biker gang. The film is being crowdfunded, so click the link in the description below or visit Indiegogo.com and search for The Outlaw Murders if you want to contribute. All donations over 10 bucks will get you a copy of the new video game Hitman Highway, starring yours truly for the PC and Android devices. You can also help out by spreading the word on social media. Thank you. I'm excited to have back on the show actor, writer, producer, and filmmaker Stephen Sewell. He's here today to talk about his latest project, The Outlaw Murders, starring film wrestler legend Bret Hart. Welcome back, Stephen. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Good to see you again. Yeah, likewise, and congratulations. But I want to know what was the inspiration behind the film? Like, it's not you're not filming yet; it's a project. But tell us about the inspiration behind it. Well, our last film, uh, Musky Point, we were really happy with how that turned out and the, and the feedback we got. So we wanted to do something similar, like a, another crime kind of picture and that sort of thing. And we thought it'd be kind of fun to do something involving bikers because, uh, I mean, I know how to ride a motorcycle. We know several people who do. I have a friend who, who does um, custom motorcycle builds and stuff like that. So we thought, oh, this might be kind of interesting. And people people tend to like that sort of stuff. So and there's a we hadn't done that before. And for um, thinking about the lead, we're, we're, we want somebody... Canadian just because uh, it would be it'd be good for the story for for press and also it would, for this administrative matter it would make things a bit easier um, and we're big wrestling fans of of Bret Hart's we started watching him back in uh, I mean he goes back a bit further but we started watching him in 1991 my brothers and I and um, and over the years we've watched him and kept up with his career and everything and so I thought okay I, I tracked figured out who his agent was and we decided to reach out and lo and behold he was interested wow and well tell us how did you approach him well, I, uh, I first emailed his agent and then um, I just sort of I introduced who I was and I showed them our, a link to our previous project and just said, uh, here's kind of how it would all work out. Give kind of a rough outline in the email. And then she said, oh, yeah, okay, he might be interested in this. Can you uh, give us a bit more information? So we spent some time developing this outline with all the characters and all that sort of stuff. And so he'd know everything about what his character was going to do and the backstory and all that kind of thing and, and how the project would go. And um, yeah, I sent that to him and then she, she passed it on to him. I sent it to her, she passed it on to him. And then, then he phoned me and we talked for a while and uh, he was interested. So and we went from there and then we uh, started working on some promotional materials and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, here we are. So what did it feel like when he said, yes? <laughs> uh, it was, it was, I guess I wasn't really su surprised. The fact that he phoned me showed me that he was interested. I had flushed out the information. Like I like I had, uh, it was so obvious, like, like I'd made everything so apparent what was going to be involved. So I, I, yeah, I was, when he phoned, I figured, okay, he must be, he must be interested, but um, yeah, no, it was a nice feeling. <laughs> you know, the, the, every time you get a yes in life, it's always, it's always a good feeling. Yes. And congratulations. So can you tell us a little bit about the, it's a crime drama and understand that Brett is playing the detective and can you, can you share some, some of the story or the movie yeah so his character is his name's inspector carlisle he is a, he's a senior uh, police detective who works working homicides he's been with the force a very long time but he, he was <clears throat> he has a sort of a checkered past with the biker underworld so he is so he was his father was involved in this very same gang that the movie's about and he his father eventually went to prison and succumbed to a drug overdose so this gave brett's character inspiration to change his life so he decided to leave the biker world and join the police force and then um he just, yeah, he sort of built himself up over there. And then now he's 
come face to face because he's investigating a mass murder that involves members of the biker gang that he was involved with before. So he, he can, there's certain contacts he still knows that he can reach out to and that sort of thing. And, and the film will basically, it, it's going to take place in the past. So what you're, what's going to be a lot of is, is interrogations between suspects. It's sort of a whodunit type thing. And there's going to be people with conflicting stories and that kind of thing. And the audience is going to see depictions of what happened, true or false, depending on who's tell, who's giving the uh, interrogation at that point. Uh, who's being interrogated at that point. And then they'll also have backstories. So a lot of the story will unfold over time. And then the, uh, and then the end, you'll sort of figure out why this happened and who did it and that, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, this film is for wrestler fans out there and, and movies, crime drama. So there's everything, but tell us who's involved. You have your two brothers, right? Um, so like, can you tell us, uh, you know, your, who does, you do the producing, right? And Eric and, um, Ian, so three brothers. I mean, how that is so special. I I think. Yeah, it's a. It, I think that's why it works is because all three of us have certain strengths. Uh, but, and also since it's three, it's like a democracy, so we can weed out the bad ideas because two will vote. Will vote <laughs> Although we do tend to agree, uh, very similar styles, very similar tastes in movie. Uh, so but yeah, I do the producing. So I do. Um, I do the sort of. I reach out to everybody involved. I organize schedules. I do all that stuff. I do the budgeting. I plan out all that sort of stuff. And uh, my brother, Eric is the editor. So he, uh, and he, you know, he has all the goes, uses the technical stuff using the computers and all that. And he, uh, he also writes all the music, um, composes it all. My older brother, Ian, he does, um, he's his biggest job that he's good at is being the problem solver. <laughs> Actually, this is not a fun job, but he's excellent at that, whether it be technical or whatnot. And uh, he does the sort of core writing because we use, um, an improvisational style. We don't um, we don't write a formal script and have the actors read it read it the lines because I find that if you do that, then it's obvious. Unless you're the most amazing writer, it's obvious that one person wrote everybody's lines because there's certain similarities between all the characters. Then, so we we came up we come up with a really uh, detailed plot outline, and we do that in this case too. And we have the um, the actors will um, will study it and they'll know what their character is all about and the motivations and and there's certain things they need to say in each in each scene. And they'll, um, we'll just improvise. We'll say, okay, go, we'll roll the camera and they'll act. And then uh, we might interrupt here and there and say, Hey, well, let's move in this direction. Let's talk about this a bit more. Stop doing that or whatever. But they, they just kind of invent their own characters for the most part within the, the guidelines we gave them. And so we film it several times, we'll do a scene. And then, um, and then, uh, afterwards, my brother Ian will transcribe all the dialogue from all the scenes. We'll watch them all. And then, uh, he'll use cutting and pasting. He'll actually edit a scene out of the footage. So he'll grab a, a, a line from this take. And he'll identify that take as like, this is the red take. This is the green take, that kind of thing, using colors. So take a line from the red take and a line from the green take, you know, piece it all together like that. Just, you know, it's remarkable that he's able to do that. And then my, my brother, Eric, will follow that and he'll know exactly where to grab the footage from based on the, the color code. Yeah, the color code is so important and how exciting this project is. And I understand you have a campaign, right? That's uh, from February the 1st till April, um, April 2nd. And now there is a video game. Can you tell us about, you know, the campaign? Yeah. So anybody who donates uh, 10 bucks or more, will get a copy of a video game we made called uh, Hitman Highway. My brother, Eric programmed the, the whole thing, which is pretty remarkable. Oh, wow. And it's a, uh, it's for the PC and for uh, Android devices. So you can play it on your phone, that kind of thing. If you have an Android and uh, it stars Brett. So basically it's a, a driving game and uh, the, you drive around through a track and the track's randomized. So it's never the same twice. And you shoot things and you dodge things. And then uh, you play till you die and you keep track of your high score, I guess. And while, since you play as Brett, you see the car drive around, but you also see Brett's face and his reactions and he comments <laughs> to the game. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a fun little game. And uh, yeah, so everybody gets a copy of that if they uh, donate. And then there's some other things beyond it. We'll, you know, like we'll give you a, uh, executive producer credit if you give us a thousand dollars say something big like that and then there's certain little things but the main the main uh perk as they call it with crowdfunding is, is the video game yes how cool is that and ten dollars right it's like but like how much money is needed to raise to film like you want to film in the summer is that or soon yeah, we'd start the, the outdoor footage in the summer. So that would be involving, especially if we're going to involve motorcycles and that sort of thing. That all has to be done uh, this summer. So we need to raise, a, the goal is to raise 130000 And we have, um, so yeah, there'll be a portion in the summer outside. Then a lot of the film will take place indoors. And we'll do that on, on a, uh, a soundstage, like studio uh, environment. That will be a little bit later in the year. But uh, yeah, we're hoping to get rolling this summer. Yeah, it's great. And, you know, if people want um, to get involved, where can they go? 
Uh, well, they just search for um, maybe Bret Hart Outlaw Murders. They can find the YouTube videos regarding it, and that has links to Indiegogo, or they could just go to Indiegogo and search for the Outlaw Murders or Outlaw Murders. That, that'd be the best way to find us. Yeah, it's in the trailer. I love the trailer. And, oh, thank you. Know, you. Yes. And is there anything else you'd like to add, Stephen? Uh, if people, since there isn't much to look at yet, because we haven't done principal photography yet, because that's the, that's the nature of when you're uh, trying to uh, put together, uh, like build up a budget. I would suggest people watch our previous movie, Musky Point. Um, Musky's M-U-S-K-I-E, not M-U-S-K-Y. But uh, people can find that on Tubi or Amazon Prime, depending on what area they're in. And that'll give you an idea of how how that editing method we use comes together. You'll get an idea of how the how all the dialogue will work. This is be a very similar themed uh, style of movie. With, the, with criminals and, and a bit of action and all that sort of stuff. So that's, if people want to know what we're about or, or what this film will turn out like as a finished product, that'd be the best thing to do. Look at uh, Musky Point. Yes, and then people can, you know, help by sharing, you know, um, you know the, the upcoming uh, project and, you know, and, you know, there's lots of ways to get involved. Yeah, that's a huge one is uh, just spreading it. I mean, not everybody can afford to chip in or that sort of thing. I completely understand that. So if, if they can't do that, just, just tell people on social media or whatever that is a that's a huge help yes and Stephen, what are your handles too uh we just have a twitter account going that's the only one we really have it's just uh outlaw murders uh twitter i'm th- pretty sure that's one of the, yeah yes <laughs> yeah, just outlaw Mur- <laughs> if they search for that they should find it. if you go on twitter and search outlaw murders you'll find it also there's links uh to the twitter account on on youtube so out of those ways to find us would be best just google for outlaw murders twitter or or outlaw murders on on uh on YouTube. Excellent. And thank you very much for, you know, being a guest on the show and I'd like you to come back and sure, yeah. start filming. It'll be great. And congratulations. I'm really excited for you. So, and again, how can people um, reach out again if they want to donate or, you know, uh, help with the campaign? Uh, it's go to Indiegogo.com and search for outlaw murders or just, just Google Indiegogo, the outlaw murders, or go to YouTube, search for the outlaw murders or Bret Hart outlaw murders. Those are the best ways to find us. And you'll, everything, you'll, you'll find links to the exactly where you can donate or, or help us by spreading those links around or whatever. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you. It's good, good to be here. What attracted you to the role? I loved how different it was for me. And uh, so that's always fun to dive into. Uh, and uh, Niav, Niav is just, she had such an incredible story that I thought I, I needed to be a part of this. And, and I lucked out. Originally, I was only scheduled to do one day on the shoot of part two of the film. And she, she called me up a few months after we shot and asked if I would be interested in being in part three. And I jumped to the chance because it's such a fantastic character. Yeah, so you play the dad. And I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if we were saying that out loud uh, for people or not. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, yeah, he's a troubled soul. He's he's a war veteran and uh, dealing with PTSD and opioid addiction and uh He's thrust upon his uh, young daughter who he really hasn't met before and uh, trying to deal with that uh, along with everything else that he's dealing with. How did you prepare for this role? Like, was it challenging? Absolutely. Uh, I, I have two friends who got over an opioid addiction. So mm-hmm. I talked with them at length about uh, mindset and physicality and uh And uh, I give them huge props for being able to get to the other side of that because it's it's a terrible thing to be dealing with or going through. And so I did. I talked to them at length and that really helped to find Lonnie for me. Mm -hmm. And what was that like working with Emma? Because there's a, you know, the father daughter relationship. Yes, I just, Audrey is such a joy to work with uh, on set and off set. uh, And she's such a professional. It really, she kind of set the tone because she had already been doing, she did part one and I came in and she just did her job, but did it beautifully and always with a smile on her face. And so it really just 
helped ease me into and and having Holter there as well. And mm -hmm. it, it was it was a great day on set. Yes, and Holter, what attracted you to the role? Uh, it's it's a sort of a I'll make it as, as less circuitous as possible. Uh, Neov directed me in an Edgar Allan Poe play in college. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, if you if you saw it, you'd be like, right, this is Neov. She <laughs> she already had the style that she has. Um, and we had sort of lost touch, but when she was writing Rick, she sort of remembered me, which is, I actually take as a compliment, even if you watch the film, <laughs> um, just aspects of, of Rick and, and also just she remembered my acting as well as she remembered me. And so I think she was like, I, there's a visual I could see and I think Holter could probably do this. So she didn't really have my info and reached out kind of a friend of a friend of a thing. And, uh, and I went to audition after very briefly looking at part one and it, it, it was the, the bad guy, but a, mm -hmm. a good bad guy makes you like him or her, you know? Like if, if you, if you can't humanize a bad guy, don't have one or just go all the way in the other direction. You know, when Charles Durning, not Charles Durning, when Charles, somebody played death in um, the last action hero, like just be bad, campy and cartoony. And that's not what she had at all. I mean, Rick has issues with everybody else, including life in America, but you, you can like him in the moments sort of in between the horrible things, you're like, oh yeah, I, I can hang out with that guy. He seems cool. And so that, that sort of juxtaposition is always fascinating to act, um, you know, to have things that are layered. Um, and there was the possibility that I could ride a Harley on camera. So, I mean, I jumped the chance and we just met, we met at like a chicken place in the city. And she basically was like, when he walked in the door, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, now we're, now we can just talk and catch up because it's, he can play Rick. No. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about the, the scene with the motorcycle. You have experience, right? Yeah, I've been riding since for probably 15 or so years. I, uh, I stopped recently because of other health concerns. Um, my wife, I think very logically said, how about I just worry about one thing killing you? Um, and in the face of that logic, I was like, yeah, right. so I'm not riding as much anymore. I think actually that those bike scenes might have been the last the last riding I've done, but I've you know tens of thousands of miles under my belt, and I'm a mechanic, so I was in incredibly comfortable on the bike, and I needed to be because Audrey and I, she'd never been on a bike, and we had all these scenes. Um, and day one, I, I pr I'm pretty sure it was either day one or day two, where our real introduction as human beings, much less as characters, took place on that bike on the road, hauling ass, um, and she just. She's like, like Kevin said, it's hilarious that she's such a pro because this was her first job ever. Wow. Um, and, you know, so it's like, oh, wow, you're so professional about this. How long have you been doing this? <laughs> 20 minutes, you know? Um, and she, she, cause it's a huge role. She carries the movie and, and the world around her is murky and lame, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and she has to bring that sunshine all the time. And I'm sure that was exhausting. Um, but she just did a great job. And, and the way she handled the motorcycle stuff, she climbed on, she figured me out, probably cast somebody who knew what they were doing. And she just gripped me like, you know, her life might end at any moment at the beginning of working the scenes and just driving around. And then within 10, 15 minutes, she was chill. She was like, I, I trust this guy. I, he seems to know what he's doing. He's, he does know his lines too, you know? Um, and then we just had a blast. And it was beautiful, just, you know, just flooring it around places. Sometimes Nia would have these big, big, long, wide shots. And she'd just be like, all right, we'll go down there and just haul all the way there and then turn around and come back and maybe we'll do it again. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was glorious. It was fantastic. Okay. <laughs> so, how are you? <laughs> Hi. Thank Happy, you for I, meeting with I, us. You know, thank you. I wanted to um, ask you, what was the inspiration behind the film? Uh, so the inspiration behind the film was a memory of mine growing up mm -hmm. as a kid and, uh, it goes, it's not faithful to the memory. So <laughs> I've <laughs> embellished, uh, largely, but it was, uh, just the, uh, the feeling of 
this child being in a, in a very dark mm-hmm. situation, potentially, but having a great time um, and going on a really fun ride and okay. seeing kind of cool stuff and enjoying it and then realizing uh, through the adults kind of reactions that there was something wrong with that and that there was something other going on, but not really understanding it all. Um, so that's kind of the starting point from it, of telling this story of Emma, uh, who is having her own experience, a childhood kind of innocent experience of all of these situations, which we as the viewer then can also kind of see that, oh, they're rather different situations than how she's necessarily experiencing them. <laughs> yes, I mean, despite the, you know, poverty, addiction, and she has hope, like she looked, we're seeing it through her lens, I would think, you know, I felt, and I felt the emotion, I, and yet everything is going around, like making the cookies, she's baking cookies, she comes out, and she could, you know, it's, it's, um, it just evokes emotion, and, and, it, and it represents to me hope, there's hope there, we, is that what you want viewers to take away from the film? Because that's what I felt. Um, you know, I think for most of the film, I was going for, I was trying to make sure that the contradictions mm-hmm. in all of these situations were present. Um, but then, at the end, because it wasn't written out the entire script, so it's not like we knew where we were ending this thing. Um, at the end, I realized we needed some hope for this girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't know how to get it because we had gotten into kind of a dark place. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was kind of the challenge for me in writing part three was to find a way to end it in a hopeful place for her without betraying the, uh, the nature of the rest of the film and not adding on some happy ending that could not exist in this film. It would feel wrong. The closing act is sponsored by Craft Academy Salon, Mallory's Fashion Network, and the BC Sports Hall of Fame.